This week's Off the Bar is no place for the faint-hearted. We've bitten the bullet and invited one of Arsenal's favourite sons onto the programme to discuss West Ham's unlucky 5-1 defeat at the Emirates, also Arsenal's FA Cup chances and maybe a little bit about Arsene Wenger's future. But there'll be no hiding place for Perry Groves. He won't have it all his own way. He famously refused to wear a Spurs shirt for charity. The shirt is in the building and we will get him at some point during the programme. Well, from the ridiculous to the sublime, and we bring you the world's best-looking golfer. Not Colin Montgomery or Darren Clark, but Sophie Horn, who plays off four and leaves most club players in her wake. Most club players and our own Tony Gale, hacker extraordinaire and pundit for Sky Sports. He's alongside with the fixtures expert and simpering redhead Alan Bentley of Private Line 88. And talking of fixtures, here they are right now. Brighton versus Arsenal, Poirier versus Wenger, and a real chance of another turn up down on the south coast. My mate Nick Owen, Luton chairman, had to cancel his holiday because the Hatters won the right to travel to Norwich, and given the Canaries' recent loss of form, the cancellation fee might just be worth it. Harry was happy with a point at West Ham last week. I reckon Anne-Marie's Carl, the MK Don's gaffer, might have an upset on his mind this weekend. United at home to Fulham. Stranger things have happened, I suppose. And a right old tear-up in prospect at Ellen Road with a visit of Spurs in a fixture which harks back to the good old days. Well, after a very uh, unlucky 5-1 defeat at the Emirates in midweek for West Ham, it's, uh, I think it surprises me that you're sitting here, Perry Groves, one of Arsenal's favourite sons. I mean, you must have been shocked because your team have been rubbish. Um, they haven't been rubbish, but they haven't been consistent, Matt. West Ham did all right for 20 minutes, um, but West Ham, what, they scored six goals away from home all season, so they will, they will stay up on, on, their, on their home form at the bowling because away from home they were, they were quite poor for an hour. I was going to say, that's magnanimous of you, but I can only say it once, and I got away with it there, so I'll carry on. Uh, and move on to the Cup this weekend. Uh, you've got a bit of history, have you not, with Brighton? Yeah, last time uh, Arsenal played Brighton down at the old Goldston ground, um, we beat them 2-1 in 1988, and I was lucky enough uh, to score the winner. And uh, before the game, our incentive was, um, George Graham said to us, if you win the game, then uh, tomorrow morning from Gatwick, we're all flying off to Marbella for five days. If you draw or you get beat, then we ain't going. So when I scored in the, I think the 74th minute, all the lads come piling on top of me and rubbing my face in the dirt, you know, just to make it a bit dirt, dirtier. All the Arsenal fans thought it was because we were going into the fifth round. It's because we knew we would be partying at St Archers with our flip-flops, our shorts and our sarongs on on the, uh, Sunday afternoon. So we all flew off uh, Sunday morning. What a wonderful image that conjures up. Um, not with my shorts, yeah. right? <laughs> no, I imagine not. Um, I want to talk about your popularity, because I won't say it's at odds with your playing career, but you were honest enough to say to me once that you know, you're a better player when you've given up. Can you, can you explain that? Yeah, I think um, when you're doing your punditry, you never make a mistake, do you? Whereas when I played, I made quite a few mistakes. But I think what happened with uh, the Arsenal fans... Um, uh, on my day, I'd give the Eng England left back a run, ar the run around. When it wasn't my day, my nan could have marked me out of the game. So, uh, but I think when I packed in play, and the Arsenal fans realised that I gave 100% like every game. And when I had a nightmare, I had a complete nightmare because I didn't hide. So obviously, my book brought me back into sort of the, the public domain. Um, I was honest in my book as well. Told a few behind the scenes uh, stories, which a lot of other autobiographers just say we played here, we played there, and they all love each other. Whereas I was sort of a bit more bare knuckle, so that brought me back into a bit of favour. What about your manager? Uh, he's uh, been embattled of late. He, he dismisses it quite well, and he, I think he handles the press quite well, but he has been under the cosh. How do you think Arsene Wenger is doing at the moment? Um, I think uh, he's a little bit sort of um, uh, handcuffed, obviously, on the financial side. And any manager, and you could have Jose Mourinho in there, yeah, you could have uh, Klopp from Borussia Dortmund, you could have any top manager in there, and they would struggle to be competitive if you kept losing your best player season after season after season. Not only losing your best players, but actually selling them to your main competitors, which I don't know any other club that does that in, in world football. Uh, and uh, I think they're probably further away now um, from winning the Premier League than we have been for probably about seven years. Seems an obvious statement, this, but you are an Arsenal fan. You still have big connections with the club, and that's not just because they pay you the odd few quid. No, um, my dad's uncle Vic was captain in the mid-50s, uh, early 60s. Um, uh, he was the gazer of his time. He came from Leighton Orient. So all my family are massive gooners. So it's, you, you get, um, I like to say educated, but probably brainwashed when you're, it's your duty as, a, as an adult to brainwash your children into the team that you want them to support. So I'm sure that... 
your kids are like West Ham fans because uh, they have no choice. My two boys, Lewis and Drew, massive gooners, and then they'll pass it on. I bet they've been lucky, my two lads. Uh, Lewis is 22, Drew is 20. They used to like, think that Arsenal just can win every game. You know, it was a given. Now, you hope they win every game. So it's being back to a proper football fan now. But one final point, I mean, and I have a theory which you'll be thrilled to hear about. The reason Arsenal have not done very well is because Arsene insists on wearing that coat which makes him look like Cyril the Caterpillar. Yeah, but it's, it's not a coat, it's uh, an oversized sleeping bag with a hood. Well, I rate him because he speaks four languages, or five languages, which is four more than most in the league, and five more than some. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately he's got a degree in economics as well, so um, he thinks he's his own money. So perhaps he should get his hands in his pockets, uh, buy the army, three, three and a half million quid from your mob. So if we take him, he could be the next uh, Vieira, and then uh, Arsenal look a little bit more powerful in centre midfield. Never happened. We're not a selling club. I think Mr. Gold and Mr. Sullivan might uh, see differently if they get their money. Perry, thank you very much. And so to the fixtures, FA Cup fixtures uh, indeed, and they make it much tougher for our experts, but they are experts. I just. Think. <coughs> just about. Oldham against Liverpool. Um, I'm an expert. I reckon Liverpool might get this one. I oh, fancy Liverpool as well, Matt. I've got to go with you. You know, you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, no, but I think Oldham, they, they need the funds desperately. We were talking about it before, you know, and I think this is just going to straight, go straight into the coffers to keep the club alive. Uh, the manager is Paul Dickoff. I used to play against Paul. Uh, we used to call him the hemorrhoid. He was a pain in the backside to play against, I'll tell you. Uh, but, the uh, tea, Duchess. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can see Liverpool winning this one. I know it's a difficult pitch at Boundary Park. It's always windy, it's always cold up there, but uh, Liverpool did well in the last round to come for a tough fixture, so... Liverpool for me. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. It's a tough pitch, but it's not the plastic pitch like it used to be, thank oh, goodness. That was, that was terrible, terrible wasn't it? But I think Liverpool will win, win with something in hand. It'll be a strong Liverpool team, and Oldham have won none in eight. I mean, they've got no backroom staff. Dickoff's on his Todd. They're pretty hopeless, Liverpool all day long. Stoke Man City. Well, Stoke have just recently got bashed up by City, didn't they? At, uh, up, at, up at City. But uh, I, I think this is going to be a tougher game. If I was edging anywhere, I might go for a draw, but I fancy Man City are going to go for this tournament. I'm not so sure about the Premier League if they're going to overturn Man United, but again, he needs to win something, Mancini. There'll be a full-strength City side out, but Stoke are tough to beat at home. I know Chelsea turned them over 4-0, but they had a pretty uh, good amount of luck on that day, so I'm going to go for a draw. Thing is, I mean, you mentioned City battering them. You know, Southampton scored three against them. Swansea did the same. I don't know what's gone wrong with Stoke yeah. in the last couple of weeks. They've started conceding goals. I think the publicity's gone to the heads. I don't like Charlie Adam in midfield. I think he's a real weak link. And I think City will win this, as Tony says, with a strong team. City all day long. But again, they're pretty short, so I think there's better bets available. Can you get odds, talking of better bets, on players going to teams? If you yeah. ha have a, an inside. Yeah. Right, here's my inside. Lionel Messi, heard of him? Go on. <laughs> Plays in Spain. Just yeah. signed a very long contract for huge money. I think the reason for the huge money, so I'm told, is so that Manchester City have to pay a fortune to get him. But get him they will. Uh, not in the next five, six years they won't. So I can't see I can't see him leaving Barcelona no. because I, I think I'd be disappointed actually because I don't think he's all about money. I know he gets paid all the riches under the sun, but uh, he deserves every every pound or Euro of it, but I can't see it, Matt, because I think he loves Barca. So that's blown that out of the wall, yeah. hasn't it? Well, not really. I, I, don't, I can't name my sources, but it no, is okay. Doug, our golf pro. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> well, having set the sports boards of the United Kingdom alight with my messy rumour, I'm now going for some real value in the game between Macclesfield and Wigan. What do you reckon? Well, six to one isn't value, Matt. I mean, that's the price Macclesfield are at home. I know the Moss Rose is awful. Tone will tell us all about it in a mo. But I think Macclesfield, they've lost ten already in the conference this season. Wigan aren't great. They won't put a full-strength team out, but Wigan, even with a moderate second eleven, will win. Two to one on, though, no value there at all. Well, the lifesaver for Macclesfield could be that pitch, you know, and Wigan like to play the beautiful game. Whatever team he puts out, he'll want to pass the ball around. They'll, they'll be hoping there's a downpour, and if there isn't, they'll have the fire engines on it anyway to yeah. make sure it's wet. This is a tough game. I think they might get a draw, but I've got to go with Wigan because of the quality of them, but oh, I hope Macclesfield can do it. Steve King, all his time in non-league, deserves a chance. You could have got 11 to 1 about Norwich last week. I mean, yeah. what was the score? 5 1? Yeah. Yeah, no value at all. <laughs> no. So, how do you rate their chances? 5 0, it was. Five, <clears throat> all right, it doesn't really matter because it was a drubbing. Um, same for Luton, do you think? 
I think Luton have got a chance of scoring. They're one of my bets the weekend, both to score, but Norwich to win it. it uh, we saw Norwich against Peterborough, where they won pretty well in the last uh, last round. I think Norwich will win, but a bit of pressure on Luton. Yeah, I think Norwich will win because uh, Luton will be playing good football. They play good football in non-league, and uh, it's if you're playing against a football inside like Norwich, it plays into their hands. I think Chrissy might rest a few players. Having striking problems at the moment, he's got to go in the market because they're on a slippery slope, Norwich, and just starting to get on the verge of those relegation places. They'll want to turn it round, and the Cup is a good time to turn it round. Norwich win. Gentlemen, thanks very much. Uh, we switch from gentlemen to one lady, and we talk about golf. Why golf? Well, you haven't seen the lady yet. She's coming up in part two. Welcome back to part two of Off the Barn, the second part of our incisive look ahead to the FA Cup fixtures this weekend. Uh, Tony Gale, uh, Brighton against Arsenal. Arsenal, very lucky win in midweek, as we've discussed. They'll be overconfident, and Brighton have got it all laying before them. I think it's Perry's specialised subject, so I'll leave him to the Arsenal bit. But I think Brighton's going to be right up their street, Matt, to be honest, for the Arsenal. I mean, if you're playing against Arsenal, you want to get amongst them. You really want to sort of get into that midfield three in particular, where they're very strong. But I don't think Brighton are going to be like that. I think they'll want to play Arsenal at their own game. I've got to go for an Arsenal win. How do the bookies see it? Well, I have to agree with Tony. I mean, Arsenal are odds on shots. A bit of inside info with Gus Poyer the other day. They're confident, but I can't see it. There's no pace in this Brighton side, and I think Walcott will frighten the living daylight out of them. In terms of value, what I've gone for, and it's a bet that's landed for us before, is both teams to score, Arsenal to win. And that's going to pay us 12 to 5. I worry about Arsenal at the back. I think Brighton can score, but I think Arsenal will win and win it with something in hand. I'd take both teams to score, but Arsenal to win quite comfortably because uh, Mikel Smith would be a threat up front for uh, Brighton. As Al said, they've got no pace out. Oxay Chamberlain would probably come back in. And the Amex is a really nice stadium. It's like a mini Emirates. Um, so I just think Arsenal will have a, a little bit too much quality. Give the against the MK Dons. We've got inside knowledge here, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Uh, we've got a young lady who works with us, Matt, and uh, she informs us there's a few injuries for MK Dons. And it was a game that I was looking at and discussing with Al that I thought was a draw because I think Harry will rest players for this, bearing in mind that the prime objective is to stay in the Premier League and they're making a good fist of that, although they've got to start winning games instead of drawing them. So I'm going to change my mind now because of our inside info and I'm going for a QPR win. Well, I think MK Dons are still a bit of value. If you shop around, you can get 11 to 2. I'm slightly tempered by the fact, as we've just heard, there are one or two injuries in the camp, but QPRs, we've just heard two, will field a weakened team, not at the top of their list of priorities. I'm giving the MK Dons a fighting chance at around about 11 to 2. Next up, Reading, Sheffield United. I think Brian would be mad not to play his full strength side because they've just got themselves on a little bit of a mini roll, a lucky roll, if you like. And I think it'd be mad to rest players. So for me, against Danny Wilson's Sheffield United, I'm going to go for Reading. Danny Wilson? Yeah. Wilson. Yeah. He's Dutch. Yes, he indeed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Sean, it's a Sean Connery. Yeah. <laughs> I must be honest, I fancy Reading in this one too. Sheffield United all of a sudden have stopped winning as well. They've uh, disintegrated somewhat down in League One. I think Reading will win. They won against Crawley in the last round. I think they'll win. I couldn't be backing them though at around 8 to 13, to be honest. Yeah, I think um, Brian McDermott will want to keep the role, especially at the Majesty. Lafondra has always got a goal in him up front, so I, I think Reading will win. Fulham might have had a chance if West Ham had beaten Manchester United, but they didn't. So what chance have Fulham got of winning at Old Trafford? I think uh, Ashraq, he will rest, rest players, but the way that he is, he'll be looking at uh, the double this year. Obviously, with uh, losing the league title last year, the one way you can top Man City there, like noisy neighbours, is to win the double. So I still think that he'll want to win the FA Cup and Man United's uh, squad it will just be too strong. Whatever 11 he plays will just be too strong. Agreed. Absolutely. The worst team performance I've seen this season was Fulham at Anfield. They were woeful and they weren't much better last week. I think there's big problems there for Martin Joel. Even at 11 to 1, I couldn't be backing them. Manchester United all day long. Fulham, they would have a chance if they had a bit of pace, but you've got Berbatov and Ruiz up front. That suits the likes of Ferdinand, Vidic, or whoever plays centre back. Because United's defence is the weakness at the moment, and I can't see Fulham exploiting it. Rooney needs game time. He'll play 90 minutes. He only came on against Spurs. I think United will be too strong. Rumour has it that the ball boys at Brentford are wearing armour plating for the yeah, visit of Chelsea. Yeah, the thing is, ball boys ain't as tough as they used to be, are they? Now, the ball boy would have got up and probably punch you in the nose. He wouldn't have rolled around on the floor. Um, yeah, you've talked about Brentford and, and uh, Chelsea. I, I think that Benitez will put out a strong Chelsea side because he wants that on his CV. The squad that, that Chelsea have, the players going in, would just be too, too strong for Brentford. 
I think the only hope Brentford have got is the pitch. It's going to be very heavy, but you know, as Perry said, there'll be a strong Chelsea team. Four to one on, though, not for me. Heavy pitch, but they, they play football, Brentford, who they Russell has got them playing football. But Chelsea are going to be too strong. And as the boys say, I mean, Rafa needs something desperately. They were woeful against Swansea over the two legs. I saw them over the two legs. Hardly looked like scoring. They've got to win here. And this is, this is a big derby, especially for Brentford fans. You know, they don't come along too often. But uh, I, I fancy Chelsea to win this one. I don't think it'll be as easy as we all maybe think, but they'll win it. And so to Leeds against Tottenham. I mean, that does bring up memories of yesteryear. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a terrific fixture, but Leeds are not the side of old. They're not the fearful place when we went there, you know, and it was uh, right in your face and real quality sides. This is not a good Leeds side. And, and Spurs, although they're rest players, it will give other players an opportunity to play. So, you know, squad players like Tom Huddleston and Sigurdsson, he'll come in and play as well. So again, I've got to go with the favourites, Matt, because Leeds are not what they were. No, absolutely. I think it's a poor championship, not just a poor Leeds. And I think we saw that in the game between Leeds and Chelsea. Tottenham will win, but again, value at 8 to 13. I'm not so sure. Again, I'm going to go for both teams to score Tottenham to win, and that one pays 12 to 5. That's the one for me. Yeah, I think the changes that AVB will make will be the likes of like Jake Livermore coming in, Brad Fried will probably play in goal, and they've, uh, they've got something to prove, you know. Um, they want to put pressure on uh, AVB to include them in the Premier League sides. When myself and uh, Gailey played, uh, Ellen Road was the most hostile stadium I'd ever played in from like uh, six, six year old boys up to 70 year old uh, granddads you could see the hatred in their eyes but they haven't had nothing to really get their teeth into at Ellen Road and um, uh, in general play I, again I see Spurs having miles too much for Leeds. Thanks a lot for coming in and maybe we can have a little chat later on about a more permanent role that would be great. Depends what the terms are. Well the terms involve getting rid of a, a large item to my left but um, we'll talk about that. I mean well, we can have it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> lovely. Uh, you're great looking, you're great looking, you're great looking, but none of you are as good looking as our next guest, Sophie Horn, coming up. I did you a disservice earlier when I said you were off for your scratch. Oh, yeah, I've turned pro this year, so taking it to the next level, and uh, hopefully the banter will die down a bit and the guys will take me more seriously. It must be fantastic, you being on the tee. Uh, with you know, three blokes or whatever, and they all think, oh, she's pretty, isn't she? She's quite dainty. And then you just nail one down the middle of the fairway. I do love that, yeah. That's what, that's what drives me to keep getting better, to be honest. I do prefer playing with the guys, I have to say, to, to give them all the banter and the challenge. Uh, it's always nice to surprise them when I whack it past them down the fairway. Yeah, a few of those you've played with are known for uh, you know, being fairly talkative, fairly chatty. Peter Schmeichel, for example, did you shut him up? You must have shut him up. I did on a few holes, yeah, I think. But he, he did come good on a few as well. He's got a hidden talent in there. Uh, Freddie Flintoff, uh, Harry Redknapp. I can't imagine either of them were quiet for too long. No, Flintoff. Flintoff's game is out of this world. And <laughs> he's got a golf swing like no other. And uh, <laughs> Harry has just got all the banter, so... It's, it's just, that's why it's such a great game, isn't it? All the sportsmen go out there and whack the ball. Not many of uh, the female golfers on tour have been invited to uh, Hugh Hefner's mansion. Um, what was that like? <laughs> that was mad, yeah. That was uh, a couple of years ago now. But uh, I went to the Playboy Golf Tournament and uh, that was crazy, like no other golf tournament I'd been to. It's just DJs on every hole and bars on every hole. And I think we played about eight holes in five hours that day and then ended off with the Playboy Mansion, yeah. Did they wheel them, um, you out? Yeah, af after I'd uh, seen to him, yeah. They wheeled him out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was about half ten, I think. That was. <laughs> One like um, top golfers like Darren Clark and Rory McIlroy, you've done a bit of modelling. How? Uh, it started off just when I decided tour wasn't for me, I decided I've got to get noticed somehow. and. I've got my ball and my stick, I, I seem to have the confidence to go out in front of a camera. All right, so what about ambitions? What, what's next uh, in Sophie Horn's diary? Well, very excitingly, I just signed my loaded to do a golf show. Uh, it's going to be off the green or something similar to that. And it's going to be a talk show, chat show, and going to have some fun with the game and make it more accessible to everyone, really, and lighten it up a bit, hopefully. I imagine it would. Um, what we need uh, alongside you there is somebody young, fit and really good at golf. It's me so or Tony Do you know Gale. anyone? No, so not really. No. no. Perry Groves? Uh, Tottenham fan, isn't he? Uh, yeah, I think he's a secret Tottenham fan. Yeah. 
Okay, guys, so last weekend, Graham Stewart had his predictions and it was a big fat zero. Mm. You got actually two last the week. Old meatloaf, two out of three ain't bad. Well done, and you got one? <laughs> I got one. Uh, made a slight profit, but one will do. Yeah. Okay, so what about this weekend? What are your top three? Predictions? Well, we've gone through this before. What I'm going to do, we've had a bet before and it's copped, is both teams to score and a particular team to win. The matches I'm looking at, the Norwich game, I think both Norwich and Luton will score, Norwich to win. We've mm. got the game Brighton and Arsenal, where I think Arsenal will, will win, but both teams to score. And finally, Leeds against Spurs, where I think Spurs will win, but again, both to score. Do them individually. If you put them in a treble, pays a whopping 34 to 1. Really? There you go, babe. Okay, anything different, Tony? Uh, different to Al. He's yeah. a. He's a Clever dick, isn't he? So um, <laughs> I'm just going. I'm just going for the straight wins. I've got an Everton away win to Bolton, Spurs away to Leeds, and Arsenal away to Brighton. So if you cop for all three, don't mm. back them individually because there's no value. But if you cop for all three, it's seven to two, and I think that's a pretty reasonable bet. Sounds good, Harry. Anything yeah, different? Mine's pretty similar. Thanks to the Gooners at, at Brighton because that's like a mini Emirates. That's the Amex will be quite comfortable for them there. Uh, I fancy Everton away at Bolton because mm -hmm. Bolton are underachieving under. Dougie Freeman, I think David Moyes will want to win the FA Cup, get it on his CV. Yeah. What about I fancy, I fancy um, QPR Tottenham. Sorry, I, I, I don't want to interrupt, especially MK you because you're a, a highly paid guest, but uh, you famously, <laughs> Harry, step in here, famously, <laughs> you refused to wear a Spurs shirt. Yeah. You even offered to pay, didn't pay, but offered to pay money to charity not to wear it. Yeah. Well, how would you like just to swap shirts with our Sophie? Because it's not your average presenter you're staring at here, is it? Go Tell you what, that's good. <laughs> what Sophie looks, right? <laughs> number one, my missus is probably going to be watching this. Right? <laughs> and number two, I would get absolutely hung, drawn and quartered by Goons fans. No money in the world and no uh, particularly uh, good looking female could make me put a Tottenham shirt on. Oh. Absolutely no chance. Oh. It Never ain't been so insulted in my life. <laughs> or I can go further than that. Oh, <laughs> I'll on, I was going to say, if, yeah. Tony, <laughs> you, if Gailey got that shirt on... He looked like David, the only guy in the village. I'd be a little bit tight on Gailey. I'll have some of that. I'll so I didn't think you'd do it, and uh, I knew Tony would give him half a chance, but there's no way that shirt is going to go over those five shirt sizes. Right, well, instead of doing that, we're going to have some keepy uppies, as per usual, outside in the nice, cold beer garden. And Matt has trained with the 4 to 7 o'clock, is he? 